Well, hello again. Uh, happy Thursday. It is a lovely day outside, so I hope you're going to take a walk today. Um, I will take a walk with my favorite furry friend who's laying down right next to me helping me with this Facebook Live video. His name is Zeus. Um, but it is a beautiful day, and it was a day that I thought about talking a little bit about what really matters right now in our lives um, as we just consider uh, I don't know, staying at home, uh, maybe doing essential work, different things that we're doing. Um, it gives you a lot of time to think, a lot of time to pray, a lot of time to process. Um, and what really came to my mind today as I was thinking, you know, what does really matter um, is Colossians, the book of Colossians. And so I was thinking about the book of Colossians. I had to look up this verse because I remember this part of Colossians where it says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. And I thought, Christ, who is your life? So what really matters right now? So I want to read to you Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, so I can put this into context and maybe talk a little bit about what else kind of comes along with that thought. So Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says, If then you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things of earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, this is my verse, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So I thought, gosh, when Christ, who is your life, that verse, um, I think about it a lot because, you know, he is our life. If we are in Christ, if we're Christians, he is our life. So what does that mean? And what does this whole thing mean within the context? And you probably heard that part here about um, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above. Um, and if you've been raised with Christ, you seek the things above. Okay, so what are the things above? He actually tells us some of this in verse 12 of Colossians 3. So he says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if a complaint, uh, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these things, put on love that binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. So um, so those are the things, if we're going to talk about being raised with Christ and seeking the things above, um, that is what we're thinking about, seeking the things above, seeking peace, seeking love, seeking humility, meekness, compassionate hearts, kindness, all of those things. So that's what he's talking about there. But I think the thing we might question in these verses the most is what does it mean, though? He says, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And this matters. This matters a lot. We know from Romans 6 that Paul in Romans 6 talks about that we have been baptized into Christ Jesus. We are baptized into his death. We have actually died with Christ in his death. What does that mean? We were buried, therefore, it says, buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So this kind of echoes a little bit of what we're seeing here in Colossians 3, that we're seeking the things above because we've been raised with Christ, but we've also died with Christ. For we have been, um, verse 5 of Romans 6 says, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Um, so what we know is that in the Bible, it talks about how we, um, we've died with Christ, meaning we've died to our old self. We have died to our self that desires sin and desires the world and desires to be friends with just the world and not um, seeking to obey Christ. Whereas when we become believers, when we are in Christ, when we repent and believe, we become, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, we become a new creation. The old has passed away and the new 
has come. So we are, you know, we think we think this is sometimes just a mental ascent, like, oh, I believe in God, I believe in him. And yet what the Bible declares is we are a new creation. So if we have died to our old self and now we're alive in him, we're a whole new creation. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And so that is really exciting because God does that. So I can't, I don't know, I think about how I am in my natural sinful self. I can't do that on my own. I cannot make myself a new creation. I can't do it. Um, but he says that now because of what Christ has done, my life is hidden with Christ in God. That comes back to our Colossians verse. Um, so our, our life is literally hidden with him. First Corinthians 6, 17 says, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. We're joined to him. We're joined to him forever. We are one spirit with the Lord if we are in Christ. So if we know him, we're a new creation. We are now able even to do those things that he's telling us in verse 12 of Colossians 3 when he says, um, as God's chosen ones be um, ones who have compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving. All of those things come because we are a new creation. So to be in Christ, to have our life hidden with Christ in God is what really, really matters right now. To be children of God, to be his. And so um, 1 John 3, 1 through 3 says that um, this is the kind of love that the Father has given us if we're in Christ, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know him. Beloved, we are Christ's children now. And what will what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So because of what Christ has done at the cross, when we repent and believe, we are a new creation. We are joined as one spirit with the Lord. We have died to our old self and been made new by him. And now we're called children of God. And we have this hope that one day he is coming again and he will make us to be like him. He will cleanse us from all of our sin. Here on earth, we still have sin. We still wrestle with it, right? But Christ, who is your life, we get to that verse now, verse four, when Christ, who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So that is a glorious hope. He's coming again to gather his people and Romans 8, 17 says, we are co-heirs with Christ. We suffer with him and we will be glorified with him. And so all of these are just amazing promises that we can look for. Um, and, and again, the fact of the matter here in, in all of this, so I say what really matters right now, and it brought me to when Christ, who is your life, if Christ is your life, your life is your life, um, what is that? look like and how important is that? Well, um, it just reminded me of what Paul writes in Philippians and what it means, what really matters. He really sums it up really well here for us um, in Philippians 3 verses 7 through 11. And he says it better than I could ever say it. So I'm going to just tell you what Paul says in Philippians 3. He says, but whatever gain I had, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things. I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, that I may share in his sufferings, becoming more like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection of the dead. And so Paul there tells us exactly what matters, what matters right now. Christ is our life. What matters right now is that we count everything, loss, 
because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ as our Savior and Lord. Um, everything else in the whole world really could be set aside and doesn't matter too much if we don't know him. And so that is ultimately what really matters. And I think I've talked about this in another video that, um, you know, as we think about everything that's going on in our world right now, I think, you know, I get so caught up in so many different things in the news media and Twitter and all of these things. And yet when it comes down to it, Paul has it right, right here. We count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ our Lord. Um, and so my question for you is, do you know him? Do you know him? And if you know him, do you know him as your Lord, as Paul says here? Um, our Colossians verses, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Is Christ your life? So for us who know him, is he our life? And if you don't know him, I would love to chat with you about him. If you don't know who Jesus is, if you don't understand that he became flesh, he is God, and he became fully man as well as becoming fully, he was fully God and fully man here on earth. And he lived a perfect sinless life. He went to the cross to crush sin and death, to bear the full weight of the wrath of God for the sins of many who would come to him in faith and repentance. And so our calling in light of that is to repent and believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins because we understand that in ourselves we are a sinful people. Um, but our verses here tell us that we can be clean. We can be made a new creation. And that is a miracle that only happens through repentance and faith in Christ. And so um, when Christ was raised, that was a proclamation to all of us that we too who are in Christ, who have our life hidden with Christ in God, as Colossians 3 tells us, that we too will appear with him in glory when he comes again. So we know we have this promise. We know the security that the resurrection gives us if we are in Christ, that we will be raised again with him to eternal life in glory. Um, so that's what I was thinking about today, and I hope I got you to think about it a little bit too. Um, these are some wonderful verses that you can go back and look up some of them and just kind of remind yourself um, what really matters right here, right now, and it is to know that your life is hidden with Christ and God and that Christ, who is your life, will appear one day in glory and he will bring us to be with him if we're in him. If you ever have questions about any of that, I would love to chat with you. Feel free to direct message me and I'm happy to chat about that more. So have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and enjoy the sunshine. It looks beautiful out there. Thanks.